transit routing use cases. This is uh, where we will take a detailed look at all the scenarios. So first, let's understand the concepts. When you have S2S sites or point to site users or express routes, you basically connect them with a connection resource and they are all connection resources that are connecting those endpoints to some gateway inside the virtual LAN hub. Similarly, for VNets, you have the virtual network connections. Now these connections, they have to get to each other or somewhere through some routes and in order for them to get to some destination or to be able to access destination, they need to be associated to a route table. Once they associate to a route table, they learn the routes from those route tables. Similarly, let's say all the VNets and all these branches, they're associated to a default route table. And once they're associated to a default route table, they need to be able to get or be able to access something. This is where these connections, they propagate routes to a route table. So let's say VNet1 is propagating its route to the default route table. This is how the default route table gets the route or learns about the routes dynamically. So here I have propagated the routes from all my branches, which is the 192 address prefixes and all my VNets, which is the 10 address prefixes. And because all these routes, they all show up in the default route table. And if all these VNets and branches associate their connections to this route table, this is how they get the any to any connectivity. So moving on, there is a new concept of custom route tables. VNets can associate to custom route tables. Uh, branches cannot associate to custom route tables. And when I say branches, it means site to site, point to site and express route. So let's say we have a custom route table called RT VNet. VNet1 is associated to it and it also propagates its route to it. So the route gets into the route table dynamically. And let's just say that VNet2 also propagates to it. Now what this means is these both these VNets have propagated the routes into this route table. And for uh, for this example, let's assume that the VNets, in order to get to these branches, they need to be able to get through a virtual appliance, which is sitting in a third leg. It's sitting inside this VNet3. So in order to do that, you would actually go ahead and add a static route for these branch prefixes. So you can aggregate them. So I have aggregated it here. And the next stop is this VNet3 connection. But then in order for the traffic to go from VNets to these branches via this pink dot, which is a virtual appliance, there needs to be somewhere we need to enter this IP. This is where you are actually going to add a next hop IP in that connection resource. So with a very simple way, you basically done this. Now let's look at it, how you isolate VNets. So in this use case, you basically have two VNets, some branches, and you want the branches to be able to connect to each other, the branches to be able to reach VNets, but the VNets need to be isolated. So let's start with the default route table. The branches they associate to the default route table. And because we want to isolate VNets, we want to customize how the traffic flows. So we will create a custom route table. In this case, we have created RT VNet. The VNets are associated to it. Because the branches need to be able to get to each other and they associate to the default route table, they'll propagate, which are these yellow lines, to the default route table. And the branches, they need to be also able to get to VNets, which means the VNets, they need to be able to propagate their routes into these route table. Also, the branches are required to be propagating to the custom route table because the VNets are associated to the custom route table. And if they see the routes of the branches, that's how they know how to get to the branches. Now, with a very simple way of association and propagation, you have simply isolated the VNets and still kept the flows between VNets and branches. The next use case is how to route to a shared services VNet. So let's say we take the same setup. We have a shared services VNet and we have an entire network behind it and it's like a one way street. So let's say VNet1 wants to get to another network behind this VNet and it has a shared services VM and that's why I'm calling this a shared services VNet. Branches, they need to be able to get to each other. Branches need to be able to get to VNets, um, all the VNet1, 2 and 3s, but VNet1 and 2, they need to be able to get to this network. So how do we do that? So branches, they associate to the default route table. They will propagate to the default route table. Uh, because they need to be able to get to VNet3, VNet1 and 2. So all of these VNets will propagate to this route table as well. The VNets, VNets1 and 2, they associate to the RT VNet, which is the custom route table. 
because they have to get to the branches, so the branches they propagate to the custom route table, and because these VNets need to get to VNet3, so VNet3 also propagates to this custom route table. With this very simple association propagation, we've essentially now steered traffic in a different way to a shared services VNet. The next use case is the custom isolation VNet. Here, I have a setup where I have a blue VNet and a pink VNet, and basically the concept is that I want the blue VNets to be able to get to each other, the pinks to be able to get to each other, and the VNets, they should all be reachable from all the branches. Now, in order to do that, we would have a default route table and all of the branches, they would propagate to it because the branches need to be able to get to each other, so they need to see the routes. Then for the custom route tables, because we want to isolate the pink and the blue VNets, we would have custom route tables, the blue VNet, and there is a custom route table for the pink VNet. And this is where I want to introduce the concept of labels. Labels are logical grouping of route tables. So if you wanted to send traffic to multiple route tables, I mean, you wanted to have routes for multiple route tables, then you would propagate to a label. And this would just propagate to all the route tables with those labels. So in this case, all of the blue VNets are associated to the blue custom route table and the pink VNet is associated to the pink route table. And the branches they need to be able to get to the blues and the pink venus, they need to be able to get to the branches. So obviously the branches have to propagate to the blue and the pink route table. Similarly, because the blues have to get to each other, so all of the blues, they are going to be propagating to the custom route table blue and the pinks are going to be all propagating to the custom route table pink. With this, the last step would be to make sure that the branches are able to get to these blue and pinks. So that's why all of this blue and pink venus, they should be propagating to the default route table because that's what the branches are associated to. The next use case is where we take a closer look at the routing configuration. So with any to any, the default route table gets all the routes of all these connections, the VNet connections, the branch connections, and this is what gives you any to any. But actually what's happening is the routing configuration of this VNet and the branch connections, they are getting the association and the propagation set to the right route tables due to which they are able to support these flows. The next one, we mix it up a bit. Basically, we take the previous use case where we have a default any to any, but we have a firewall in the mix. If you use the firewall manager UI, the routing is taken care of. It is abstracted for you. The user goes and picks uh, an option to secure internet traffic, which is where Azure becomes the internet edge. So you can do VNet to internet via the Azure firewall, branch to internet via the Azure firewall. And for the private traffic, let's say you decide to go direct, all you have to do is in the Azure Firewall Manager UI, secure internet traffic and the routing kicks in, which basically is a static route of 00, zero with next hop Azure Firewall in the default route table. Very simple. The next use case is one of the most prominent use cases where customers want to be able to route traffic through virtual appliances. So here I have a pink dot in both these VNets, VNet 2 and VNet 4, and this is an NVA or network virtual appliance. Let's say they have an entire network behind it and they want to be able to do VNet to VNet. So in order to do VNet to VNet, this is the topology that uh, is supported in virtual VAN. Currently, we do not support the ability for going from VNet to VNet through another virtual appliance, which is sitting in a third VNet, but that's in our roadmap. So let's say you have this network and you have a default route table set up with all the branches and the VNet spokes propagating to it. So in here, the steps are you would first define the UDRs or the routes from this indirect VNets to the NVA VNet. The second step would be to ensure that there is a static route to get to the NVA connections and those you would add to the default route table. And then the third step would be to make sure that you specify the NVA IP in that VNet connection. So this is how you get routing through the NVAs and you can basically mix and match it up with the other use cases to give you all the flows. And in this case, you get the V2V flows. You can get across hubs within the hub. You can get branch to VNet across hub within the hub, and you can also get the internet cutout flows in here. Let's take a closer look at the portal. In the portal, every hub has a routing section and inside the routing section, you can basically create a route table. You can uh, set up the static routes in the basic tab. You can set up labels. You can associate the connections. So when you pick connections here, all you're doing is you're associating those connections to this route table. Uh, you can propagate the routes from connections. So when you're selecting, let's say, a VNet connection in this dropdown, what you're saying is propagate routes from that VNet connection to this route table. Also, you can look at the effective routes of a route table. And here, as you can see, you can see the next hop. You can see origin from where this route was learned. And you have a lot of information through which you can do some troubleshooting. To summarize, branches are all collectively terms for site-to-site, point-to-site, and express route connection. They associate 
to default route table and they propagate to the same set of route tables. So let's say branch A propagates to route table A and branch B also will propagate to route table A. Similarly, for custom route tables, uh, you have certain abilities. Custom route tables, they apply to VNets. You can set up static routes, you can view effective routes. And the last concept here is if you did not want to propagate routes, you can propagate to something called a non route table, which basically is saying that the connection does not want to propagate the route to any route table.